Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I will be talking about tephilitis. Tephilitis is known as neutropenic enterocolitis. This is common uh, in cancer wards, particularly among patients with hematological cancer and they are on chemotherapy. So you can have you know, the thinking, neutropenic enterocolitis, of course, is obvious. There's low level of neutrophil and intestinal uh, damage is occurring with inflammatory process going on. So that is the broad picture of tephilitis, neutropenic enterocolitis common among patients with cancer, particularly hematological cancer, taking chemotherapy. With this background, let's go. Tabulitis is also known as neutropenic enterocolitis. It is a life-threatening necrotizing enterocolitis. From the word neutropenic and another word, enterocolitis, you should have gotten the picture that this has to do with low level of neutrophil. And intestine is involved and there is inflammation. So it's occurring primarily in people that have low level of neutrophils. And commonly in people with hematological malignancies and already taking treatment chemotherapy, and because it is affecting the intestine, the part of the intestine that will be affected will be the cecum at ileocecal region. The pathogenesis is not quite known, but there is a probability that there will be combination of factors. And one of the factors is mucosal injury. So there's injury to the mucosa lining, I mean the lining of the intestine, right? In someone with profound neutropenia. And of course with neutropenia, we know that the immune system is in trouble, right? With impaired host defense. That will lead to necrosis from cecum to ascending colon and then to terminal island. It is associated with hemorrhage. Of course, when there's uh, mucosa uh, lining damage, that will lead to ulcer, hemorrhage, mucosa loss. Then when inflammatory cells set in, there will be edema. And of course, because there is damage already, and you know before that time that the gastrointestinal tract Particularly, the light intestine is well endowed with uh, a lot of you know, bacteria. Then polymicrobial infiltration of the bowel wall will occur. So with that, a lot of uh, agents, bacteria will get into the system, the anaerobes, Ostridium septicum, Candida species, gram-negative bacilli, gram-positive coca, Pseudomona reginosa, E. coli, Klebsiella species, Streptococcus viridans, Enterococci, and Clostridium species, all will get in through the damage causer. What are the possible risk factors here? Commonly in anyone with hematological malignancies, either children with leukemia or adults with leukemia or people with lymphoma, multiple myeloma, myelodysplastic syndromes, aplastic anemia, and of course ACE because I said that the other time that host immune defense will play a role. So when it is done like an acquired immune deficiency syndrome, it will be a contributory factor. And of course, drug-induced neutropenia 
or post transplants because people that have transplants will have you know immune suppressants right as a type of brain cyclosporin and the rest of them immunosuppressive therapy like i've just mentioned particularly in those who have organ transplants right previous chemotherapy and co-occurring in healthy people when healthy people acquire clostridium perfringes in any form they could come down with it also diverticulitis or tumor infiltration and previous surgery could be associated risk factors what are the clinical features of course the other name of typhilitis is neutropenic enterocolitis right so there will be neutropenia then there will be fever after three weeks of chemotherapy when there is ulcer of course there will be pain and when uh, inflammatory cells are in place and there's edema of course there will be abdominal distension and the distension could even be as a result of you know a hemorrhage there and of course cramping there is pain where you pay there will be tenderness who have nausea vomiting with the high level of polymicrobial agents right watery and bloody diarrhea it's possible frank hematochesia because there will, there will be ulceration right and of course paralytic islands by the time there's massive diarrhea and potassium is lost you can be dealing with paralytic islands peritonitis because of perforation of the intestinal wall then affecting the peritone shock from massive uh, diarrhea leading to hypovolemic shock or hemorrhage leading to hemorrhagic shock and of course intestinal perforation like i said that will lead to peritonitis stomatitis and pharyngitis when you are trying to make diagnosis please don't do the following no billion enema why it is hazardous because it can cause perforation due to necrotic war in a situation where intestinal perforation is very much possible so don't add to that probability of intestinal perforations because the the the, the acute case will make it you know, easier for perforation no colonoscopy you know, for the same reason above and there are many other investigations that are less risky so because you say oh doc you said don't you know do billion enema don't use colonoscopy then what are we going to do to make the diagnosis don't worry let's get to the next slide okay you can do CT you can have ultrasound, abdominal x ray, have your complete blood count to know the level of anemia. You can have platelets count that will be decreased. Uh, white blood cell count will increase. Run your liver function test to know whether this bleeding is even associated with liver problem or not. Of course, renal function test because of many treatments we're going to give and whether there's even problem with kidney and so on of course clotting profile because uh, there's massive bleeding including frank blood hematochesia right um procalcitonin yes procalcitonin is very useful in fact i've made a separate presentation on procalcitonin you can check my channel for that uh, procalcitonin will let us know whether we're dealing with bacteria or viral infection and will help us guide the type of medication whether it is working or not i mean when you choose your antibiotics and you think you are winning the level of procalcitonin would dictate if you have a laboratory center around that could run you know, the acid within you know, the time required to run procalcitonin lactoferrin and carpotectin would be useful particularly if you are thinking am i dealing with inflammatory bowel disease here or not 
What are the possible differential diagnoses? It could be neutropenic enterocolitis, that is the other name of tephylitis, right? Could be appendicitis, okay? Could be appendicium abscess, could be clostridium divisiculitis, could be graft versus host disease, could be cytomegalovirus colitis, norovirus infection, ischemic colitis, Oglevitz syndrome, cholangitis, and cholecystitis. Possible differential diagnosis. How do we treat? Okay. It's going to be patient by patient based because the presentation will not be the same pattern. The severity might not be the same pattern. But because we can't compare someone who has just you know, gotten the problem in, in the last few hours without the test and perforation to someone who has surgical abdomen already with guarding, uh, rebound tenderness, tenderness on cough and everything like that. No. One will go straight to the operating room. The other one could be managed medically. So put your tubes wherever appropriate, IV fluid, nutritional support, blood transfusion after grouping and cross-matching, fresh frozen plasma, blood spectrum antibiotics. You can even start that empirically until you have a microscopic culture and sensitivity test done. Surgery, if there's perforation. The antibiotics you may choose will likely be uh, one of these or combination. You might choose tazosine, that is combination of papyracillin and tazobactin, broad spectrum, um, cephalosporin with metronidazole, voriconazole if uh, there's fungal infection, and of course you can have amosizilin with clavulanid. Please no antidiarrhea agents, no anticholinergic agent. Why? That may tilt the situation to toxic megacolon. And you can give granulosite colony stimulating factor as needed. Somebody is asking me, what is GCSF? Granulosite colony stimulating factor will help, you know, as per the uh, revival of low level of neutrophy will, will help with the neutropenia. Delay next chemotherapy until full recovery. Remember, the pathological malignancies on chemotherapy will be one of the major risk factors. So delay the nice chemotherapy. You know, chemotherapy will be you know, cause by cause, you know, you understand? Including surgical side wound healing. So let all those be taken care of before you start another chemotherapy. What are the possible outcomes that we can have? One, we might do everything and the patient will still die. Mortality is very high greater than 50%. That's why I'm making this presentation that this is a very serious matter. Mortality is mostly due to sepsis and of course intestinal perforation. Okay, my heart goes out to all affected people and as we you know, continue to help them out, prayer will be able to solve the problem of many. With that, I come to the end of this a short presentation called tafilitis. Other name is neutropenic enterocolitis. Low level of neutropenia, inflammation of the colon. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that anytime I release my presentations, you'll be able to have copy immediately. I appreciate it. Thank you.